Okay, video number one. Sorry we didn't get to post one sooner. We've been uh, busy as hell since we got here. Uh, we are on the boat. We have begun getting systems online. Let's turn it on. Downstairs. Uh, everything is still a mess. There's bunk beds in here. Had to access this hatch yesterday. In here we have an air conditioner and back there some plumbing repairs that I had to do. We had lots of plumbing repairs. Every single joint froze and cracked. Everything leaked. I've been chasing repairs for a week and I finally got them all sealed up. The mattress for this one is in there. There's the head, the guest head. Sorry, there's no lights on. Guest head shower. And the V-berth. Everything's a mess. We're still getting rid of the previous owner's stuff. We're still going through all stuff. We found all kinds of charts in here. The whole East Coast and all the Bahamas is all charted out. We got washer dryer. Powered it up yesterday. Everything turns on. But uh, we'll see what happens in there. I haven't fed it water yet. I'm betting it leaks. Here we have master stateroom, master head, shower. We've yet to use it. Just got water in the last couple of days. It's a pigsty in here. Both of the toilets, both of the commodes, this valve right here is the inlet. This is the water feed. Water feeds that little valve and it's a freshwater flush toilet. Again, excuse the mess. This is the condition we got the boat. We still haven't got in here cleaning it yet. But that is a plastic valve and it had water in it and it froze. So it's cracked. So it leaks, which is why this place looks kind of the way it does. We had everything. I capped the line off. We're waiting for parts. We're in Montauk, New York. Can't get parts for anything. Got to order everything and it takes forever to get here. So when we have our new valves, we will have commodes. The showers work. I got the new water heater in and I got all the leaks sealed up for the most part. It pressures up. The system works. Moving along. Back upstairs. Just thought we had to also install new water pump right there. Those, that old T line is no good. There's blockages in there and both of those filter screens are cracked. So we're just feeding it straight from the water tank. That's another repair that's gonna have to be done, but in order to get us underway, this will work. We just fill up the tank and run it straight to, straight to the pump that way. There is a filter in the engine bay that filters the water as well. The galley. And microwave convection oven. Cooktop works. We have water, we have dirty dishes. This guy is our uh, refrigerator, freezer. Freezer works great, refrigerator works, but it doesn't keep things very cold. There's a dial switch inside there that's broken off. Everything in this boat is old. So you can't adjust the temperature of the fridge, meaning it's uh, we can't we can't really use it so ordered a new fridge found a replacement fridge that's about the same size it's gonna fit right in there um, it for about a third of the cost of having one custom made or having finding another one of these this ice machine this is an ice maker and behind here booba's food behind there there is also a plastic water valve that had water in it that froze and cracked and leaked it leaked all over this whole area was full of water before I caught it um, inside that cover is another capped off line I took the feed line loose and I just put a cap on it so that ice maker is inoperable until uh, until we get a new 
valve for it, but odds are we won't be able to find one, so that one's just probably going to be a replacement ice machine. This is where the water that was leaking from that ice maker came out and wet the carpet from the bottom up. And you can see it's nasty old carpet anyway. It appears that this thing had been leaking for quite some time before we bought the boat. Now, it should be noted that when I bought this boat and I started inspecting it, I found incomplete repairs on the plumbing system throughout. It had been having problems that uh, they were trying to diagnose. I'm guessing the previous owners were trying to find where they were losing water pressure. Um, I found leaks throughout the boat and I've been repairing them one by one. I still haven't even found them all. But the few leaks that I have found today are just dripping. Um, I'll fix those in time. None of the ones that are spraying. Um, I fixed all the ones that were actually spraying water and, and causing us to lose water pressure. The tank fills up with water and it stays pressurized for the most part. The pump hardly turns on, so I've got most of the leaks sealed up. That I'll put back together once it dries up. I'm just leaving it loose for the day. Lazy ass dog. All right, out on the deck. Now, for any of you guys that are considering purchasing a magma grill, this is an incredibly overpriced, low quality, marine grade cooking grill. Don't waste your money. These things, uh, Uh, they have high and low, but it's pretty much super high. You're only cooking whatever you're cooking at a really high temp and the flame is right under the meat. Uh, and the slightest little puff of a breeze will blow that thing out. And you'll be relighting it, moving your grill and moving the food so you can relight that grill ten times. It's, it's a pain. So everything that was in the engine room is now on the deck. I'm in the middle of cleaning the engine room. This is my going to be my first task and I've been here just over a week and all I've done is chase water leaks I'm starting week two and I'm just now starting on the first day of planned tasks which is cleaning the engine bay okay now I've already sprayed this down and then give it a good shot of engine degreaser throughout these are my big beautiful Detroit 8V92 twin turbo diesel engines. This engine's hour meter reads 500 hours. This engine's hour reader means hour meter reads 4300 hours. Not sure the discrepancy, perhaps one was rebuilt and one has not been rebuilt. Perhaps the key was left on one for a season. Perhaps the meter for this one was inoperable for some time. Both meters operate now. Air conditioner. Freezer for the deck. Halon system. Generator. Haven't even got to that part yet. Oil transfer pump. This will pump oil in and out of both engines and the generator. Two new batteries, the other two new batteries, some old batteries. Got a lot of water in here because I just hosed down this whole thing and then uh, give it a shot of engine degreaser. There's some of the environmentally friendly stuff, low odor, so it's not too gamey in here. But as you can see, a lot of the old paint is just peeling off everywhere. But uh, battery charger, there's your water pressure system and vacuum pressure system for the commodes. Everything works. These engines both run. They do both start. I've fired them both up. I fired them up and shut them both down. I came down here first and made sure that I could shut them down manually before, if anybody's watching this video that wants to give me crap about it, I did make sure that I could manually operate the emergency shutdown flaps. The cables are all seized, but I did come down here and was able to operate them manually. They're way up inside there and hard to reach. Uh, the uh, governor switch is in here yeah, it's up behind all that shit and that also can be manually operated to kill the engine now if you were in a runaway situation I don't think that that would kill the engine but this the one back there would uh, started both engines 
they both started to, they both started and I shut them down immediately. I did not want to drive them in, run them any further than just to make sure that they would actually crank over. Now, this thing's been sitting for a number of years, mixed reports. The guy I bought the boat from said it's been sitting here for four years. The guy at the marina said it's been sitting here for eight years. So it's hard to tell what story is accurate. But it's been sitting for years and both engines had enough residual compression to immediately fire. And then I shut them both down and they both shut right down. So today I will be, after I clean up in here, I will be removing the valve covers. I will be operating the rockers to make sure all the fuel injectors move. Uh, I will remove the air boxes and I will inspect the cylinders and the rings and the pistons as best I can. Lots of items need to be removed. I will probably begin disassembling the cooling system. Now I was told that this boat was winterized when they parked it here. Well, I've rinsed a lot of it off with the hose, but these inlets and these water pump housings have lots of corrosion on them, which to me indicates that there is uh, salt water remaining. Now you can see the bolt caps, so maybe they just didn't clean it after they winterized it, but all of them appear in the same condition. Open generator. So all the pickups, the valves are open and they all have corrosion. Or they're not really corrosion, but they have that salt water buildup. So I'm concerned about what I'm going to find in there, but we shall see when we pressure the system up. Today I'll be disassembling and so I can get uh, new impellers, any hoses and belts that are on this thing, I'm probably going to get some spares. There's quite a few already on board. Spare hoses, spare parts here and there. In this engine, the starboard engine, the one consequently also with uh, the lower hours, has more newer silicones on it versus the old rubbers. So some of these were replaced possibly if and when it was overhauled, I'm not sure. But the condition of the paint and the bolts in the transmission indicate that they are, you know, it's all in the same condition as this engine. It doesn't have really any indication that this one's been overhauled. But on these engines, I guess it's kind of hard to tell because the work is done inside. We'll see. If I, if I, if she runs rough, I'll do a compression check. I'll probably do a compression test on it anyway. I've been reading manuals on how to properly do it, but you know, as you can see, my water system needs to be dealt with before I do anything. I'll be taking all this apart, making sure it's all clean and water flows. I'll replace thermostats. I will replace impellers, even if they look good, and I will have spares on board. These joints, these joints here. Now these things all hopefully just need to be cleaned up, but that's a new hose. That's what the old ones would have looked like, the old rubber style. This one's been replaced at some point. I mean, overall, she's in great shape. She doesn't leak too bad. There's a little bit of oil residue down there. Again, I just rinsed all this off and sprayed everything down with the hose, so there's water and paint chips everywhere. Caught that with my hip coming through. I actually squeezed my skinny ass through there. <laughs> to get to the other side of the engine, I was doing plumbing repairs, you can see. Right in there. There's a couple more. There's actually two repairs I did there, you can't really see. And then... I found a couple more. Let's see if we can catch one. That water filter right there drips, as does the fitting above it. Those are two repairs that I found today that I need to do. The new water heater is right back there. You probably really can't see it, but it's just a water heater. But let me tell you, pulling a water heater through that hole, down those steps, and getting it through there, and around that corner, over that exhaust pipe, is no picnic. Here, let's take a little journey. You guys can see where I brought a water heater through here. Look at this. This is a cable system that reels my 50 amp power cord 
reels it up and coils it up into a large bucket that was placed there. The system is inoperable. It doesn't even work. As you can see, I removed it partially just enough to get my... Oops. Wrong button. But I will be removing all this in time. I have more important things to worry about now. It's not in the way. There's no loose power wires or anything going to it. Everything is disconnected on the other end, so I don't... I brought that water heater in there. Half of me was saying I should have spent the time just to remove the exhaust, but I didn't want to do that. There's the water heater. And there's my 32 volt battery charger. Turbo, turbo. Hope I never have turbo problems because I got four of the son of a bitches in here I'm going to have to deal with. So. More stuff to take apart today. Make sure all the ball valves are in good shape. Make sure all the strainers are clean. I'll brush all that green off of there. She should be looking like looking like new before long. We got all kinds of stuff to do in here. Let me try to crawl back out of here. This is my first video, so forgive me if I seem like an idiot to you people. Brutus, come say hi. Oh, you're gonna pose for the camera. Okay. Let's go outside, shall we? Top. All right, let's go up to the bridge. Now, we won't bother going all the way up to the tower because that's it's about 38 feet off the ground. No fun to be up there holding the phone. Here's a bridge. Nice, big, roomy bridge. My controls we need a new helm wheel but uh, everything here works all the lights everything powers up we got we got navigation sonar that's the radar but it doesn't work the bar spins up top but the screen doesn't turn on I haven't even messed with any of that yet pulled all the cushions out from inside so, it does have windows that go around too, but the zippers have all disintegrated with time. And just the zipper. And just pick them right off. And it's just disintegrating. So those need to be replaced. So this is the bridge. This is the view of the marina. Boat that got crashed into by another boat. It was a foggy day. This guy was out fishing, reeling up his nets, and a 40-foot Cabo crashed into him doing 28 knots. Drove right over the top of his bow, right to the bottom. Grimes, these guys, this is what they do. This is a fishing marina. This is a fishing town. Pretty cool. Pretty cool digs out here. Expensive as shit. We don't want to be here any longer than we have to. All right, now we're going to go see some cool stuff happening. Uh, old water heater. It was still functional, but seriously. Look at that fucking thing. It was a rough shape, and the water inside looked about as bad as that. So... That was an easy choice to replace that. Okay. There she is. Now, for her name, up till a few weeks ago, Top Hat. New Bern, North Carolina, which coincidentally is where Hatteras boats are manufactured. All of our junk. We don't have a shed, so we put it under the boat. This boat's got lots of little blisters. This side's not as bad, but co-pilot's over there working on the other ones. She's so big. Look at my truck. <laughs> I mean, yeah. 
somebody graffitied my boat. I don't know who would have done that. Oh, we got blisters. Say hi. Over here. Over here. She got her music on. She can't even hear me. She doesn't realize that she's starring in a video. Hi. Cindy's working on blisters. We got lots of little blisters. This is the thickest area. And she's just grinding away. I'll follow through later and open it up, take the green off, and we'll start patching them. We're just gonna patch them with a marine epoxy that's fiber reinforced. I don't need anybody giving me shit about it either. That's the way I'm gonna do it. It's my boat. You guys can all chime in and tell me how I'm doing it wrong, but. We're gonna expose and cut off all the loose blister. <coughs> These are probably osmosis blisters by the look of them. Uh, I stopped marking there, I figured. By the time we get to here, we should be pretty good at locating them. There's nowhere near as many on the back, and there's nowhere near as many on the other side. This seems to be the fattest area. So we're grinding away the skin of the blister until we get to smooth bonded material where the gel coat is bonded well with the fiberglass. And then we're just going to apply a fiber reinforced marine grade epoxy, sand it smooth, and then put a bunch of bottom paint over it. I know that we should be exposing a lot more area and we should be doing this and we should be doing that. I will sand the bottom paint away before I apply the, the epoxy. But I know that there's much more effective prescribed methods to doing this repair. This boat's been out of the water long enough now. Get all those blisters as dry as a bone. There's no more osmosis happening in there. There's no more damage occurring. As you can see, this bottom paint is toast. So it's all coming off. Probably going to get rid of those stripes. And that stripe. Should just be shiny white. I gave it a bit of an acid bath the other day, but it needs some more cleaning. But. It already has a little bit of a shine there. A little bit of elbow grease. This whole thing will shine up real nice. Big old monster props. Really good shape. The rudders are all solid. Everything's in really good shape on this boat. Anyway, that's video number one. I will continue posting probably every couple of days or so. Thanks guys.